Now, whales will strand for all sorts of reasons, for natural causes, unnatural causes, but either way, when they do, it is valuable information for scientists to piece together their biology and their life history. And recently, I went down to the National Museum of Scotland to meet Andrew Kitchener to find out how. Andrew, this is such a privilege to be behind the scenes in this museum. It's an incredible collection. We've stopped here, and I just wondered if you could tell me what we're looking at. Well, this is the skull of an adult male sperm whale, uh, but we have got a more recent specimen uh, who's known well as Moby, and he was the first sperm whale to be stranded in the Firth of Forth for 228 years. What can you learn from a stranded um, marine mammal? Because we can look at different parts of the skeleton and the teeth, we can start ageing them, sexing them, we can um, work out their ecology from sampling the bone and so on. So, for example, here, this is a sperm whale tooth from Moby. Wow. Um, that's quite, wow, that's heavy. It is heavy, <laughs> yeah. And so what we can do is we can take a slice through this tooth, mm -hmm. and here is a slice through one Gosh. of Moby's teeth. Well, they're like tree growth rings, aren't they, it, obviously? But that's is that right. the same Yeah. Sort of so, so literally by counting those growth layers, mm -hmm. we can work out that Moby, who was over 15 metres long when he turned, turned up on the shore, was about 44 years old. We can then actually also start analysing um, chemicals within the teeth from each of those years. So we can show that his diet was changing and his position in the Atlantic Ocean was changing. That's incredible. So it's not just an ageing technique, you can actually work out their sort of life story, yeah, if you it, like. That's right, their ecology and uh, where they've come from, where they've been, and yeah, so it's an incredible record of the life of an animal. In a sense, I mean, a tragic event to find an animal, as a majestic animal like that, washed ashore, but then it can be a valuable resource in terms of being able to learn more about them. Yeah, well, what we've got here is a library of life, and it allows us to look back in time to see how populations and species have changed, and we've got to keep that timeline going so that in the future, researchers will have something to look on because new techniques will become available. Mm -hmm. The library of life, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I've got to tell you, it's incredible to hold the actual tooth of an animal that has hunted down a giant squid. What is also incredible is the science, and let's just look at that a bit more closely. I'm even going to brave the weather and take my glove off here. Now, as Andrew said, they analyze the chemical composition of each growth ring. And what they can tell from that is things like when the whale left its natal group, which would be around 10 to 12 years old. They can also tell when it reached sexual maturity. They can also tell when it reaches a large enough size to start hunting down that giant squid. But for me, what's really fascinating is that they're able to tell where the whale traveled in the world. And that's because Different water bodies around different parts of the world will have a unique or a distinctive chemical signature and that gets laid down in the growth ring like a passport stamp and it tells them where the whale was travelling right through its lifetime.